Hello everyone, it's Greg from Edinburgh Renaissance Fencing Academy for another tutorial video. Um, tonight we're going to be doing another combat sequence uh, based on Degrassi's rapier system. Like with the earlier combat sequences I've shown in other tutorial videos, this is not something that's directly taken from Degrassi's 1570 treatise. Um, what I've done is taken bits and pieces of movements and principles from that book and constructed my own sequence. Uh, it's principally a training exercise just to work on fitting different movements within the system together. Um, as such, you should try to practice it, applying all the principles of body mechanics, posture and oh, stance. Yeah and uh, repeat the sequence as often as you need to to make it smooth. Um, we'll come back to some tips for training it at the end of the video. Um, this sequence is a little bit more advanced than the other ones I've shown. Uh, it includes some new techniques um, and therefore it's principally aimed at more advanced, more developed fencers who've already familiarised themselves with the basics of Degrassi's system. Um, so within my own school, that means free scholars rather than novices. If you are more of a novice, you can probably follow the outline of this, but I'm not going to be teaching the more complex moves in a lot of detail in this video. Uh, okay, there's one thing I do need to teach in a lot of detail though, which is the guard position that we're going to start the sequence with. So usually Degrassi's uh, sequences start from low ward. This guard position is very versatile. But today we're going to use broad ward, which involves holding the sword projected out from the shoulder, the torso turned a little bit more square on to the adversary, and the foot shuffled a little bit out to the right hand side. So this is broad ward. Degrassi notes that this is an invitational guard, so you're inviting your opponent to come and attack in here by looking like you're uncovered or open in this line. But he says the tip of the sword is angled slightly in to defend you. So we can try to parry with the tip of the sword or perform stop thrusts like this to intercept the opponent as they move in. Uh, and that concept of a stop thrust to either hit or at least drive back the opponent is how we start our sequence. Uh, I'll show the sequence once, break it down into steps and then show it again. So we come on guard, broad ward, and the sequence goes like this. Okay, so the individual movements are on guard and broad ward. We perform a wide angle stoccata like this with an advance of the lead foot. This is intended as a stop thrust, but in this sequence we're going to imagine that the opponent does not get struck by this, instead they retreat. As the opponent retreats, we perform a beat, which is a small half-size cut to deflect their sword. Like so, opening up their defence, for a more regular low-line stoccata to the chest. We assume that they parry this, and so uh, that gives them the opportunity to riposte. We defeat the riposte by retreating and disengaging the sword by performing a cavazione, an extraction of the blade, and parrying. So we end up on the opposite side of the opponent's sword, deflecting their attack that way. We're now at relatively close measure, so we extend the offhand with a step and perform a grip. In other words, we grab the hilt or sword hand, suppress it a little, and then finish them off with a direct thrust to the chest or face, performed from the broad ward position like so. Uh, it's not necessary to support this with a step but due to the extreme close measure. We then extract the weapon, and retreat back to broad ward and we're ready to begin this, uh, the sequence again. So the sequence can be looped again and again as many times as you want to until you can perform it well. So I'll show the sequence once more. OK, 
Okay, so that was uh, two times through the sequence looped together. When you are training this, um, some final tips for you. Train slow. Uh, make sure you get all the movements smooth and efficient and make sure you're paying attention to the body engagement and posture so that this rotation is driving all of the actions. Keep your sword arm relaxed. Keep the grip on the sword nice and light and relaxed and flexible. Uh, and don't step too far with your feet. This is quite a compact sequence of movements, as most of the grassy's movements actually are. So um, that's our sequence for today. Some more advanced concepts, broadward, a stop thrust, a cavazione or extraction or disengagement, and a grip. So have fun practicing that and I will see you next time for another topic in our next tutorial video.